In a realm where the sky was a vibrant shade of lavender and the ground glimmered like a sea of emeralds, a young boy named Theo found himself waking up. He blinked, allowing his eyes to adjust to the brightness around him, taking in the strange and unfamiliar surroundings. The air had a sweet, floral scent, and the horizon seemed to stretch endlessly, punctuated only by occasional distant trees that looked like they were crafted from crystal. Beneath him, the grass wasn't just green, it pulsated with a gentle, luminescent glow, like a heartbeat of the very earth he was on. Theo sat up, rubbing his eyes and trying to remember how he'd gotten to this place. His last memory was of him playing in the backyard of his home, chasing after his dog, Buddy. He recalled tripping over a root and falling, but after that, everything was a blank. There was no sign of his home, his family, or the familiar landmarks of his town. The only thing he could recognize was the t-shirt and shorts he was wearing, now slightly dirtied from where he'd been lying. Confused and overwhelmed, Theo's first instinct was to call out. Mom? Dad? His voice echoed, creating a symphony of sounds that danced around him. But there was no answer. Only the gentle rustling of the glowing grass and the distant song of unseen birds. It felt eerie and beautiful all at once. Determined to find a way back home, Theo decided to walk in one direction, hoping he'd find someone or something that could help him. As he trudged on, the landscape began to change. The glowing grass gave way to a forest of translucent trees, their leaves shimmering in a myriad of colors with every gentle gust of wind. After what felt like hours, Theo stumbled upon a clearing where a large, serene pond lay. The water was clear, so clear in fact, that it seemed as though he could see straight to the core of this strange world. Schools of fish, resembling floating orbs of light, swam below, casting their irradiance upwards. By the edge of the pond stood a statue. It was of a woman, her hands outstretched as if beckoning someone. Her face, though made of stone, held an expression of profound sadness. Next to the statue, a set of stone steps led downwards, spiraling into the depths below. Driven by a mix of curiosity and desperation, Theo approached the statue and the steps. He felt drawn to them, as if they held the key to understanding where he was. He took a deep breath and began descending. The steps were cold beneath his feet, and the deeper he went, the darker it became. But guiding him was a soft, bluish glow emanating from the walls. After what seemed like an eternity, he reached the end. Before him lay a massive door, adorned with intricate patterns that moved and shifted as if alive. Theo hesitated for a moment, wondering if he should turn back. But the thought of his family, of getting back to them, pushed him forward. He reached out and touched the door, and immediately, it began to glow even brighter, the patterns swirling and dancing. With a gentle rumble, the door slowly opened, revealing a pathway that led to nothingness. It was an abyss, a vast expanse of darkness that seemed endless. But floating in the void were fragments of memories, like shattered pieces of glass reflecting moments from his life. He saw himself as a baby, being cradled by his mother, playing with his father in the park, laughing with his friends at school. Tears filled Theo's eyes. He realized that this place, as beautiful and mesmerizing as it was, wasn't where he belonged. He had to find a way back, back to those memories, back to his life. With newfound determination, Theo turned and began to make his way back up the stairs. But as he did, a soft voice echoed through the chamber, lost, yet not lost. Seek the beacon, and you shall find your path. The voice faded as quickly as it had come, leaving Theo with more questions than answers. But one thing was clear, he needed to find this beacon if he was ever to return home. And with that thought, he quickened his pace, eager to continue his search and reunite with his family. With the mysterious voice's words echoing in his mind, Theo emerged from the underground chamber and back into the radiant world. The statue by the pond now seemed to regard him with a knowing look, its stony face almost appearing to offer a subtle nod of encouragement. Theo began his journey anew, his heart brimming with hope. The landscape was vast, but he was sure that the beacon, whatever it was, would reveal itself if he kept searching. The horizon beckoned him, promising answers with every step. As he ventured further, Theo soon found himself in a meadow filled with flowers unlike any he'd ever seen. They were tall, stretching up to the lavender sky, with petals that shimmered and changed colors. At their center, they held tiny orbs of light, pulsating gently. Remembering the voice's hint, Theo wondered if these were the beacons he was looking for. Curiously, he approached one and reached out. As his fingers touched the orb, a rush of emotions and memories flooded through him. He was back in his backyard, playing with Buddy feeling the sun on his face, hearing the distant laughter of his parents from the porch. 
but just as quickly as the memory had come, it vanished, leaving him standing in the meadow once more. Realizing that these flowers, while magical, were not the beacon he sought, Theo continued his journey. The path he followed now led to a vast desert. The sand beneath his feet was not hot, but cool and soft, like powdered sugar. In the distance, he saw towering pillars of light, rising and falling rhythmically. Drawn to them, Theo made his way to the pillars. As he approached, he saw that they were not made of light, but of water, cascading waterfalls that defied gravity, flowing upwards towards the sky. At the base of each waterfall was a pool, and in the center of each pool, a single stone. Remembering the statue by the pond, Theo approached one of the stones. Inscribed on its surface were words, written in a language he couldn't understand. However, the moment he touched it, the words transformed, reshaping into a message he could read, the beacon is not a place, but a feeling. Seek what's missing, and you'll find your way. Confused, Theo sat by the pool, pondering the message. What was he missing? He thought of his home, his family, and buddy. He remembered the joy, the love, the safety he felt when he was with them. And it hit him, the beacon wasn't a physical object, it was the feeling of home, of belonging. Energized by this revelation, Theo stood up and closed his eyes. He focused on that feeling, letting it fill every inch of his being. And as he did, the world around him began to change. The desert, the waterfalls, and the glowing meadow faded away, replaced by a dense forest. But this forest was not made of crystal trees, it was familiar, with tall oaks and chirping birds. In the distance, he heard a bark, Buddy's bark. Heart racing, Theo ran towards the sound. Bursting through the trees, he found himself on the edge of a clearing. And there, right in the middle, was his home. His real home. The front door opened, and out came his parents, their faces etched with relief and joy. Behind them, Buddy wagged his tail, barking excitedly. Tears streamed down Theo's face as he sprinted towards them. The feeling of home, of love, had indeed been the beacon that guided him back. But just as he was about to reach them, a bright light enveloped everything. The world spun, and Theo felt a sensation of falling. And then, suddenly, everything went dark. Theo's eyes fluttered open, greeted by a canopy of green leaves and the filtered sunlight. He was lying on the grass, the very same grass of his backyard. Overhead, the familiar blue of the sky stretched out, dotted with fluffy white clouds. The surreal landscapes, the cascading waterfalls that defied gravity, the radiant meadow, had it all been a dream? Pushing himself to sit up, Theo glanced around. A few meters away was the route he remembered tripping over. And, just as memory served, he could see a small indentation in the ground where he had fallen. It all looked so ordinary, so contrasting to the fantastical world he had seemingly just left behind. A bark broke his train of thought. Buddy, tail wagging furiously, bounded over and playfully licked Theo's face. The sensation was real, familiar, comforting. Hey, boy, Theo murmured, wrapping his arms around his pet. But as the seconds turned to minutes, a nagging thought persisted, had he truly been on an otherworldly journey or had his mind conjured it all up? Lost in thought, he didn't immediately notice the voices calling out to him. It was only when strong arms enveloped him that he realized his parents were beside him, their faces etched with worry and relief. Oh, Theo! His mother exclaimed, her eyes glistening with tears. You gave us such a fright. We found you here, unconscious. What happened? Theo hesitated. How could he explain the realm of lavender skies and glowing grass, the beckoning statue, or the mysterious messages? Would they believe him? I. I tripped over that route, he began slowly, pointing towards the culprit. And then, I had the most vivid dream. Or at least, I think it was a dream. His father exchanged a look with his mother, his brow furrowed in concern. Dream? What kind of dream? Theo recounted his journey, describing each twist and turn in detail. As he spoke, he noticed his parents sharing occasional glances, their expressions unreadable. When he finished, there was a moment of silence. Then his mother spoke, her voice soft and thoughtful. You know, Theo, sometimes our minds take us on incredible journeys when we're trying to make sense of things, especially when we're faced with sudden and unexpected challenges. His father nodded, squeezing Theo's shoulder. Whether it was a dream or something more, what's important is that you're back with us, safe and sound. Theo looked down, processing their words. In his heart, he knew that the feelings he had experienced, the longing, the love, the sheer determination to return, were as real as the grass beneath him. Maybe it was a dream, 
he murmured, but it felt so real. And it made me realize how much I love and need you both. His parents hugged him tightly, and for a long while, the three of them simply sat there, wrapped in a cocoon of warmth and love. Days turned into weeks, and life resumed its usual rhythm. But for Theo, things had shifted slightly. He looked at the world with a new perspective, cherishing every moment with his family and appreciating the beauty in the ordinary. And sometimes, when the sky turned a particular shade of purple during sunset or when he caught a whiff of a floral scent carried by the breeze, Theo would smile to himself, recalling the lessons from a world that might or might not have been a dream. The true beacon, after all, wasn't in some distant realm. It was right here, in the heart of home.